guys, welcome back to The Stuff of Legend. My name is Dilo, and I have some movie news to discuss with you guys, and it's revolving around not only just DC, but this is a DC Marvel news, and it's a very interesting one. So, um, a lot of you guys are aware that Jake Gyllenhaal was in talks to replace Ben Affleck as the Batman in the DCEU. So, the future of the DCU has been shaky as of late. We have no idea if it's going to continue after Aquaman, Flashpoint, Shazam, if, it, if that's going to be it. Are they going to continue doing the Man of Steel 2? Are they going to do that second Suicide Squad? Are they going to do the Gotham City Sirens? There's so much that's up in the air. We're not sure. It's like rumored, but then they never came back and, and talked about it again. Or, you know, it's just, it's all gray area. The reason for that has been because Warner Brothers has been uncertain that the people in charge ought to be in charge. And so there's been a shakeup in leadership. So there's a guy that by the name of Hamada, and he does a lot of horror film work. And I don't typically watch a lot of horror films. So uh, as part of a shakeup in its DC film operations, Warner Brothers is promoting Walter Hamada to oversee its comic movies. Variety has learned he will serve as the president of DC-based film production. In December, the studio decided to replace John Berg and Jeff Johns as the heads of the DC movies. Berg became a production partner with Roy Lee, the producer of the Lego movie and It, who has a deal on the lot. John remains at DC as president and chief uh, creative officer, but his portfolio doesn't just involve film. So essentially what it's saying here is that Jeff Johns is still going to remain the head of all the TV, like the Arrowverse, Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, the Legends of Tomorrow, you know, the whole, all of that, he's going to still be in charge of that, which I think is a good idea just so that you don't have um, a total change of pace. Some people might say you need a change of pace for those shows. Um, I've liked those shows up till now. Well, I like some of the shows more than others. I really like Arrow. I really like Flash and some of the other ones. It doesn't quite do it for me. Let's get back to the whole Warner Brothers shakeup. Jeff Johns is going to be in charge of the Arrowverse. That's still happening. But Walter Hamada is going to be the guy running the show for the DC comic book films and other comic book films that Warner Brothers governs over outside of DC. And so this is going to be uh, big news. Now we know that Ben Affleck was getting really tired of being the Batman under DC Warner Brothers. And he never explicitly came out and said that it was because of Warner Brothers. But we also know that he was supposed to direct the Batman movie. When he was doing that, he was saying it was a dream come true. He's always wanted to do this. And then he comes out with, oh, you know, we're going in a different direction. And it's just, you know, the, the real reason and all of the other projects that have DC, like The Flash has had multiple directors leave the project, Suicide Squad had some shakeups. All the projects that have been coming out for DC and Warner Brothers, including Justice League, that was a different, a little bit different incident, but some people say it wasn't with his daughter. There are issues with Warner Brothers and DC films. Now, I hope that Walter Hamada is great for this franchise, but how this ties into Marvel is very interesting. Jake Gyllenhaal was supposed to replace Ben Affleck because Ben Affleck was stepping down. But now that they've got new leadership, Walter Hamada is changing the course. And we don't, we don't exactly know where this is going just yet. But like many of you guys, I watch the John Campia show. And he said that he knows somebody that he had a conversation with. He didn't give us great details, but he said that Hamada has plans that involve Ben Affleck as Batman. This is just somebody saying something but he's, he's a well-connected somebody, somebody that many of us trust. And beyond that, there's now some evidence that would corroborate that story. Jake Gyllenhaal, who was in talks to do Batman, is now to be playing Mysterio, Quentin Beck, in Spider-Man Homecoming 2. This is a Marvel franchise. Some of people were like freaking out. Oh my gosh, why would he betray DC for Marvel? He's turning on DC. It's not really about that. If you're an actor, I was an actor for a time, and you just have a casting call. And if you're in SF casting, New York casting, LA casting, whatever it is, you have a membership. And there's casting calls and you can choose to throw yourself out there and pursue those and they get back to you if they want you. They'll look at your profile. They'll say, hey, okay, yeah, we want you or whatever. Now for the big roles, you have to go in and, and audition and there's always going to be some sort of an audition process for anything that has lines or any major roles. But Jake Gyllenhaal is an A-list actor. He's like the man, okay? I don't care if you don't like him. He's great. He's a great actor. You can, you can like or not like whoever you want and that's fine, but... He's, he's one of the big names in Hollywood right now, and he's a major talent. So for him to be Batman, I think is a great thing. I, I've always loved everything I've ever seen Jake Gyllenhaal in, and he brings such power, such emotion. He's such a, a strong performance. He gives such a strong performance. He gives his all into it. I, I'm not sure if he's 100% if he's method, but I know that when he does military roles, he goes and he's on, he's on the base, he's on the camp, he's out training, he's doing everything that a soldier would 
um, while, while him still being a civilian. And then also same for his police roles. He'll do ride-alongs for months. And um, there's a lot of crazy intense digging into the character. I think it would be really cool for him to be playing another actor, Quentin Beck. And um, I think that it's not, it's not about him choosing Marvel over DC or DC over Marvel. It's just a role. It's a role that he likes. It's a role that he would be willing to play. And um, I did hear John Campia um, say in his, in his response to somebody, he does a question and answer segment that's awesome and I love that. Um, but he said, he, a question had come in what, about the whole choosing Marvel over DC and he was saying, it's probably a matter of contract not wanting to be tied into a five movie deal if you're Batman as a lead role versus having a one movie role as, as the enemy of Spider-Man who will probably get killed off. I would disagree to that. I love John Campia. He's such a smart dude. He knows what he's talking about. But I will say this, Spider-Man Homecoming did not kill off the Vulture. They didn't kill Scorpion, who got a brutal beating by Spider-Man. Um, they didn't kill off the Tinkerer. In fact, no villains died. The only villain that died was the first Shocker, but they had a Shocker ready to replace him. They had Herman Schultz. That was something that they had already had a contingency plan for to set up the tone, to set up the stakes for the villain. They had that set up, but we have Shocker, we have Vulture, we have the Tinkerer, we have Scorpion, and now we just got word that Jake Gyllenhaal is gonna be Mysterio. And so I don't think that he's gonna get killed off. I think that he's gonna go his course. We'll probably see the Scorpion show up. We'll probably see Vulture at some point, even if it's an after credit, he's gonna, he's gonna show his face because he's still out there. Both him, Shocker, the Scorpion, and the Tinkerer, they're all there. But it's gonna be really cool now having Jake Gyllenhaal, a majorly talented guy, playing an actor and a special effects wizard, somebody in Quentin Beck, his story is that he is a Hollywood guy. He's a special effects wizard and he gets into acting, but then he kind of gets turned down and rejected and he gets found to be a fraud and he uses dangerous methods. People get hurt and he gets shunned from the society of actors and what he does. And so he kind of loses his job and he turns that on Spider-Man because he went to hurt somebody and then Spider-Man came and saved them and he kind of got painted like a villain. So he becomes Mysterio and he starts to go after Spider-Man I think it would be really cool. And I heard um, another guy, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out there because I watch a lot of people. Charlie from Emergency Awesome was talking about how in the, in the comics, um, Amazing Spider-Man number two, he got introduced. And then also in, this is something that I remember in the, in the 90s TV show this with Spider-Man that Avia Rod and Stan Lee did together. Um, I love that. I love that so much. I, I could watch that forever and I do. Quentin Beck, he goes and he, he tries to frame Spider-Man because he gives illusions, he shapeshifts, and he has costumes and all this stuff. He doesn't really shapeshift, it's an, it's all illusion. But the point is that he tricks the public into thinking that Spider-Man's robbing banks when it's really him. And then he comes back as Mysterio and takes out a false Spider-Man so that he can show that he's the good guy and Spider-Man's the bad guy. And he gives the money, or some of the money, back to the people. And uh, you know he looks like a hero, Spider-Man looks like a villain, and Spider-Man has to deal with that. That would be an awesome story for Spider-Man Homecoming 2. I mean, that would be amazing. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man, <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended, seriously. But that was, you know, that would be amazing. That would be great. Um, and Jake Gyllenhaal could really bring a character like that, a complex character like that to life, who's got, who's got real world issues. He's got some pride on him. Um, he's really good at what he does, like really good. And then he's able to utilize technology, which they've been leaning into heavily in this new iteration of Spider-Man and all of his villains in his rogues gallery. They're leaning heavy into that. Tinkerer's still out there. Tinkerer could take that and and run with it. This is this is all stuff that Charlie had covered, but it was things that I was I, I could fully agree with. And it's kind of this is kind of almost like my response to um, John Campia and his his thing was that I think that he's not going to die. In fact, I think that Quentin Beck is going to live and become part of the Sinister Six because he's actually one of the original members of the Sinister Six, and that would be really cool because then they would have. Um, if they wanted to do a makeshift and not the total original Sinister Six, they could do Shocker, Vulture, Mysterio, the Tinkerer, Scorpion, whoever else they want to add in there. I made a video back in January. It was one of my first videos, but it was my Spider-Man Homecoming theory video. And it's actually one of my more popular videos on the channel. Go ahead and give that a view so that you can know what I'm talking about here. It ties in with the theory that I had before there of them building the Sinister Six. And it's not so subtle, you know, it's not something you have to dig really deep to get into. But I had a theory about how they were going to go about this. And I didn't know whether or not they were going to include Mysterio, and I didn't even, I didn't even think they were going to, because they had they were almost there with 
so many of the characters. Like they had Shocker, they had the Vulture. I thought they might be subbing in Tinkerer, but even if they don't, he's like a supplier, you know? And then they had uh, the Scorpion. They already had three of them right there. They already introduced Aaron Davis. And that was something that we talked about a while back. He could come back as the Iron Spider. He could get the, the suit after Spider-Man comes back from Avengers. We have no idea what's going to take place, but it's fun to theorize. And that's, that's part of the fun here. So that being said, Aaron Davis could be either the Prowler as a villain, or he could be the Iron Spider as the, as the villain, as they did um, in the comics with Miles Morales. And so... That would be a lot of fun. But there's tons of options they have. They're already talking about doing Kraven as a potential villain for Black Panther 2 if they can get permission from Sony. And if they can't, they'll probably just use Kraven in this in this series. You know, it'd be a lot of fun to have some of the villains we haven't seen be integrated into the into the film franchise. Even if they don't touch Doctor Octopus or Green Goblin, if they don't go back to Electro, that's totally fine. We've already seen these characters, some of them a couple times already. We've already seen them hinted at a couple times. It would be really nice to just get a fresh group of villains and watch them do what they did with Michael Keaton's Vulture. You know, make him take someone who was not super impressive as a villain. I mean, he was he was a fun villain in the comics and in the 90s TV show, but it's like he wasn't as cool as the Green Goblin. He wasn't as cool as the Hobgoblin or Venom or Dr. Octopus, and they really turned it around. I mean, they really, like, I, I think I have the Vulture pop for Spider-Man Homecoming is super sick. I love just the way that they made Michael Keaton's Vulture look. Because the old one was just spandex. You know, the old one was spandex and a fur collar and it was just a tight wingsuit and there was no explanation for how he's able to propel himself through the air. It was just comic book magic. We don't know how. This is logical. This is something that's technological and that we can kind of wrap our minds around because we see some tech like this in the real world. And then they made the collar something that was necessary you know that fur collar that vulture has the feathers technically but they gave him a fur collar on his ace combat jacket because he's exposed in mid-flight that makes sense there's so much cool stuff that they did they took the vulture and they made him this like relatable dad who got burned by a company he lost his job he lost his investment and he's just trying to provide for his family he wasn't setting out to be a villain but then he found a way to market some of that alien chitauri tech and sell it and um they just they grounded the character so strong and then michael keaton's performance coupled with that to perfection i mean one of the best mcu villains out there i mean i still think that like killmonger is great but i mean if i'm if i'm totally being honest with myself i think i actually quite enjoyed the vulture i think it, this is my hierarchy i think right now it's thanos loki i think i think after that it has to be michael keaton's vulture and then it's probably Killmonger, and then then the list just goes down, 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 down. I'd have to compile a list for you guys. I, I think I will. I'll make a list for you guys about my favorite villains. You guys let me know in the comments who's your favorite villain. And also, please, let me know if you guys are excited about Jake Gyllenhaal playing Mysterio, playing Quentin Beck in the Homecoming sequel. I think this is awesome. And I'm really excited because Miss, this is the whole, pre, you know, the whole purpose of this video was to let you guys know that if he signs on as Mysterio, he is coming back for a Sinister Six. This is where the franchise is building. This is what they've already talked about with us. This is where they want to go. They've always wanted to do a Sinister Six in the movies, and they've never gotten to do that. This is the opportunity, and Mysterio is one of the originals. He's one of the Sinister Six. I think that if they continue down this path, all the Spider-Man fans are going to be thrilled. I mean, how can you go wrong with an actor like Jake Gyllenhaal playing a complex character like Quentin Beck? It's going to be cool. And especially if you aren't even a big fan of Mysterio from the games, from the comics, from the TV shows, you're going to fall in love with this performance. I'm pretty sure I'm going to fall in love with this. And we, we might not. He might bomb. Who knows? But I, I have a lot of confidence based on what I've seen from Jake Gyllenhaal and what I've seen from Marvel orchestrating Spider-Man and his villains. So far, gold. And it could, it, it could wane. We don't know. But I have faith. Marvel's just been like on this uptick, 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 up, 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 up. And I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be awesome. And it'll be really cool to see another Spider-Man film because it's going to be a low, a lower stakes movie. Spider-Man Homecoming was contained. It felt like Friendly Neighborhood. My son, he's over here. He's waking up. It felt like Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. And I hope that they stick to that feel. We don't need like intergalactic scale Spider-Man. I just want some, some really good Spider-Man. You know what I mean? 
And so let me know in the comments if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. If you think that Spider-Man should go intergalactic or international or whatever, let me know there. I wanna, I wanna hear about that. And I think that that'll be a fun discussion as well. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. We're probably gonna see Jake Gyllenhaal sign on to a two, three, four movie deal until they get that Sinister Six, which is probably gonna be only two or three movies from here. I think that it's gonna be wonderful and it's not actually that different from DC and Warner Brothers as far as the, the multi-deal contract, except that it's the studio he's signing on with. Marvel doesn't have that reputation of failure and, and not, not working well with the directors and not working well with the script and redoing the script at the last minute, reshoots and all that stuff. It would be a lot smoother for him to join Marvel and it'd be a much more lucrative opportunity for him, I think. Even if he's playing a villain in a few movies in a row, I think that it'll be... A, a much better deal for him than having the weight of a franchise that's so jaded right now. You know, like it's, as a DC fan, it's really hard going into a new DC film because it's like, what are they gonna mess up on now? Versus in the Marvel films, it's kind of just like, I'm really excited for this. I think it's gonna be fun. I'm really, I'm really excited about this. We've been burned before by DC and so has Ben Affleck. But I think Hamada's gonna stick with Affleck and he's gonna give him a chance to shine. I hope they do. I hope we get like a Batman and Deathstroke thing or or they play him versus the Joker. We get more into Jared Leto and what happened to Batman and Batman v Superman. Why is he so dark? Why is he killing people? What happened to Robin? All that stuff. I hope we get that. And I, I think that it'll be really good having Hall on the Marvel side, even if he's playing a villain. So that's, gonna, that's my take right there. That's my take on the movie news for Marvel and DC and Hall and playing the villain here and Warner Brothers and Hamada and all that stuff. So thank you guys for watching. This has been another episode of The Stuff of Legend. Please make sure to like this video if you liked it. If you love it, please share it with those you love. That really helps me out. I love it when you guys share. And then make sure to subscribe if you haven't and hit the notification bell to be notified right away when I upload my next video. And then also you'll be notified when I go live next time. That way we can also, again, comment back and forth in the chat. That's fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of the stuff of legend. That's it forever, yeah.